Well, once again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is Nichols1987, and I'm bringing you War of the Roses Kingmaker again. It's one of my favorite games of all time, and I can't stress enough how cool it is. It's just freaking one of the best melee combat games you ever play. But if you already know what the game is, you're probably here watching this because it said it's going to be a spear review. And now, uh, this is not so much a review as it is kind of explaining a few things about how the spear works and how much better I think it is than any other weapon. Now, this is the loadout that I normally use, the beast and the fang, although for whatever reason the B is uh, not capitalized. Um, but this is the Eastern Partisan Spear, or Partisan Spear of Eastern Passion. And now, this is a, a million dollar spear on a thing apparently. Or, I have quite a bit of money now, but it does take a long time to get a million dollars, so a lot of people don't have that spear. Um, you can use some of the other spears as well, and they work pretty decently. I like this one a lot. I don't know I don't have it unlocked. I, it, the stats are very comparable to this. Uh, it's actually quicker, and speeds up a little bit higher than this, the Eastern Partisan uh, Passion, but I just love my Eastern Passion Spear too much. Uh, the range on it is, look, you can't even see the tip of the blade because it is so long. Look at that. But anyway, um, now Spear, obviously, you can use it with the two-handed without a shield, but there is really no reason to do that because you can always unequip your spear, I mean, always equip your shield, or if your shield breaks, you can use your spear two-handed anyway. You most of the time need to have this shield out because the spear is very weak against plate armor and even people in medium armor who have the chest plate, it's very hard to penetrate those things. I've learned that the hard way through doing duels and trying out different things. Now, I'm not going to just keep talking here, I'm actually going to go into a game and we're going to play a little bit and we can see my spear in action, and I can kind of explain a little bit of how things work here. This is a pretty awesome map. It's probably the prettiest map there is in the game. But aside from that, blood needs to be spilled now. Kill the so, enemy! This is just a team deathmatch. It looks like it's pretty early on. We have 23 kills, so we're already up in the lead. Um, I'm pretty high rank. I'm level like 56 or something right now. So I have played this game quite a bit. It takes a long, long time to get to that. I played this game maybe <laughs> too many hours, like 300 hours. So, and most of those hours were just playing with the spear and shield. Or the spear, shield, and your sidearm, obviously, because that needs to be used. And right out of the bat, we already find some guys. He's got a friend coming in to help him. But let me get the range. See, now, the main thing with the spear is that you have a great range advantage over most of the people you're fighting. You don't want to let people get in too close when you're fighting them, unless you want them to. And also, when they do, you need to start using the shield bash like that. Most people think it's a cheap move. I honestly think it's freaking genius. Um, it's the only kind of dodge that they have in this game, so I use it like such. Like, you can use it to, I don't know, backpedal off of shit like that, or um, if you're in the middle of a fight with somebody and someone else shows up, you can always do this. Switch around to the back, and now you have... Look how much space I just gained right there. So it's really a useful ability aside from just bashing people, but when you do, obviously you have a whole time to charge maybe a medium attack up to like right there. Yeah, medium. This is a full charge. They'll definitely recover by the time that happens. And they knock him to the ground, and we finish him off. Archer. See, look, you can get up on these rocks and fly over. I don't think you noticed that. If I don't help this guy, he's gonna be out, um, outmatched pretty soon. 
See, but the archers always try to gain range and let them move in close, but then they, when they get to their side arms, they really can't do too much to you, as long as you maintain this range from them. So the main point of the spare and shield is obviously just to stay out of the range. The shield keeps it so that way you have, you don't have to worry about directionally blocking or breaking your shield, I mean, or breaking your spear, which will happen really quickly if I was to use two-handed and start parrying things. Uh, oh, fucking asshole. Uh, I might actually try to show some two-handed spear here, but... Uh, there's lots of tactics that you can use with it. It's Although you can only thrust and you can only shield bash while you have the combo equipped, um, they can be blocked by both down, I mean only a down parry or uh, just a normal shield block from the opponent. Um, there's several other ways you can get around doing that, which are advanced techniques I like to call. What the hell? That make no fucking sense right there. If I can get this right. <laughs> Another thing is most people aren't used to running away from a spear. A spear is very difficult to get away from if you're engaged and you try to turn away like the enemy tries to run from you. You have a really easy chance to pick out your shot from them while they're running because... Ooh. Hold on. Kill streak. Some crazy shit is going down right now. I'm gonna finish off this guy. Let's see. They just can't get away. Archer should always be your first target. You should never try to let an archer get away from you because they're one, probably one of the easiest targets you'll be able to kill on the battlefield, and two, they're just fucking annoying if you just let them shoot at you. Now this guy also has a shield, and it's going to be difficult to get around it, but you can tell when his shield is, when he's charging his attack because he'll move his weapon to the forward position like that. And then that's when you strike. The most important thing when using this is to make sure that you are not just spamming your attack. A lot of people think, yeah, I'm just spamming this like this, la la la. But <laughs> you can actually uh, have to, uh, you actually have to kind of wait for the perfect strike. Because if you don't and someone's down parrying like this, then you're screwed. You'll definitely be able to get hit by a counter attack after that. Um, even with your shield equipped. But, once you wait for that, like this guy obviously doesn't care what the fuck I'm doing, he was too busy trying to kill that guy, but if I was fighting someone one on one, it would be a different story. You have to be a lot more tactical, or either that or give that up and be a lot more aggressive. And take him out as quickly as possible. See, this is two on one fight. You have to try to use to see how I'm gonna maneuver between them, so that way they're not both at one point, like one we have the initiative. side of each other. Um, oh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> you want to keep them separated as much as you can, because when they're close together, it is a lot more common for the one behind not to try to attack you. Once they're separated, if one's on the left, one's on the right, then they'll be more confident thinking that their hit's not going to attack their teammate and that it's going to hit you, leaving themselves open to you striking them street like with a, an attack on guarded. Um, meanwhile, which you have to be using your footwork, so you kind of maneuver backwards, left, right, whatever you need to. Once you start fighting, you know, three or four people at the same time, that's when it becomes a little bit more difficult to keep that in check, but it's still doable. In fact, it can be even easier because they start actually hitting each other and causing all kinds of havoc among themselves. So you have ample time to be able to, as long as you're backpedaling the whole time, to charge up a quick attack and thrust in on a open face or, you know, some, on the back of somebody's leg and hamstring them down or something, you know. I use hamstring, so yeah, that's why I do that shit. So I'm going to try to do this one more battle, and see what goes on. Uh, come on now, there we go. 
Squad one leader. And I want to try to get some Kill people onto my spawn. No, it looks like there's not even actually that many people playing, unless they're just not connected yet. Uh, this is another cool map. This is actually the newest map there is in the game. And it's freaking awesome when they brought it out. Although I just don't like it in team deathmatch. It's such a long way to run from when you die to where you actually fight. So we got our team running in from the back over there. Now I use light armor as opposed to medium or heavy armor. I think it gives you the most movement and with the spear and shield combo it really doesn't matter. Hold on. With the spear and shield combo, it really doesn't matter um, where you get hit from on the left or the right, because you probably should, you sh really shouldn't be getting hit on the left or right. You should be able to maintain distance from all your enemies. And oh fuck, I got shot, man. Put your backs into it, you maggot. Uh, you should be able to maintain distance from all your enemies without having to get hit from your flanks. If you are, then either you're one, not doing it right, or two, you're getting too close, which would also, I guess, be not doing it right. Oh, fuck, man. Shot me straight in the eye. Look at this. Or, next to the eye. Thank you. No, I guess not. Um, I'll have to make the dreaded walk back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part so you guys don't have to... Watch this. Okay, so we're getting a little bit closer here. Uh, another thing that's important is when you're squad leader, you need to be paying attention to what the fuck your squad mates are doing. See, he's engaged in combat right there, so I'm gonna go ahead and buff him up so that way... Oh, he can survive a little bit longer. See, he was on bleed for a quick second there, but he popped right... Oh, he died anyway, but... Um, he pop. Oh, here we go. Here's the three on two one. With archers in the fucking back. Uh, what matter? What's the matter? You missed. Okay, now they're fucking sending out the cavalry. <laughs> Uh, there's no way I can win this fight. This is just ridiculous. I don't even know where the fuck my team's at right now. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a fight that's not pretty much you can't win that. If there were not so many archers up there on the top, there actually might have been a chance I could have killed a couple of melee guys. Um, I came close to killing two of them right there. They were on bleed, but I had to jump off that goddamn thing or else I was going to get spammed. Um, archers, like I said, they're the number one killing. If you're not killing archers, then you just get mm -hmm. shot by them. I don't care if you have to sneak up behind the archers and, you know, stab them in the back or whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. Just as long as they die, because... I got shot about two times that fucking fight right there, and... That's what really stopped me from getting into my my little demon rage. Um, so it looks like those archers they were back at work up there on the top. I already shot my fucking guy who just spawned in on me. And there's a melee coming in across on the left right here it looked like. Yeah, he's hiding behind the rock. Check your kit, vermin. Kill him. See, look now when people start doing that, that's when you have to change your spear stance. You see how I had to switch to my two-handed spear and um, slice him across the chest there. And he was just blocking down, and that was perfectly good to neutralize anything that you can do with the two-handed spear. I mean, with the spear and shield, 
Um, if I was to go ahead and try to shield bash him, it wouldn't work. Unless I did um, some kind of little special thing where, well, I'd have to show you that. It's kind of hard to do. Um, where you pretty much turn your back to him right before you shield bash, activate it, you end up standing behind them, and then um, with your shield facing towards them, you bash them right away. It's like an inst almost instantaneous thing, and they can't block it unless they turn around real fucking quick, which is, uh, I never really seen anybody do that before. I'd be kind of freaked out and fighting them if, I, <laughs> if they did. Um, or they're backpedaling. If they're backpedaling, it won't work right because, which he was and why I didn't do it. Uh, they'll be out of your range by the time that you jump back, and then they'll just be able to stab you in the back. So, um, so damn things that require thought when you're fighting people one on one, like I was fighting that archer there. I think I mentioned before. Accidentally stabbed my teammate. Put your backs into it, you and look, now we got some momentum here. I got a couple guys with me, and this guy's backing the fuck up. He already knows. Look, he's bleeding. They're gonna rush behind him and stab him in the back. Oh. Didn't work out, but. I don't see any archers up there. I don't know what could be in. What's happening? Oh, I hear him. See, oh shit. Uh, high windman. You must use high windman if you're using the spear and shield combo. You'll be able to switch over to your secondary weapon on the fly a lot quicker than you could beforehand. And that is absolutely key to be able to fight people and surprise them. If you're fighting someone and they think you're just being able to use the spear and the shield um, and restrict it to only being able to attack them down and then you surprise them by switching out to your axe uh, real quick and it's actually pretty fast that that happens. You see I'm attacking charging, switch out. Oh, where the fuck did this guy come from? Bang into the wall but it's okay. I wanted that to happen. <laughs> so you know he's gonna leave himself open too much. He's not. He's probably not used to fighting like this. Um, you have to bide your time, like I mentioned. Oh, I didn't. Well, well. <laughs> you have to kind of let them make the move. Once they engage in some kind of activity, whether it's breaking their guard or getting ready, at, uh, readying an attack, or coming in to finish off a charged attack, if they were. I'm charging during that time, um, that's when you are able to move forward and go in for the attack really quickly. Uh, it's more difficult when you start fighting people who like to put a lot of pressure on you, who come in close like a warhammer. At first, if you're first starting to use the spear, um, can be very hard to fight because they'll come in and they'll just fucking swing and swing and swing and so they just knock you down. Uh, they don't they don't give a fuck. That's why most times you see a Warhammer and they're wearing heavy armor because they just want to get in close and and kill you. Uh, they don't have the range to mess around, you know? Um, so even when backpedaling it's very hard to get away from them. You have to either turn your full back to them which causes them to be able to charge you and knock you down to the floor or you have to uh, fucking shield bash them. They're charging straight at you. This is the perfect opportunity to shield bash. Uh, a charging enemy runs into you. Watch, he's gonna run into me. Oh, he ready to sing, but I'm gonna jump off to the side. Um, a charging enemy. And now he's gonna think I wanna do this again. I'm gonna switch my axe. <laughs> okay, well, back to what I was saying. Um, a charging enemy will always come at you, almost always, just keep moving into you. Um, so the point is that you need to shield bash, compensate for the space that um, they would be either walking into you or that at that point the fight would be moving left or right. Um, you need to utilize that time and that momentum that they have against you to shorten the distance that you have to shield bash. So if something's running at you and you shield bash at the exact moment that it would touch you, instead you move backward at pretty much faster speed that they'd be running at you. 
um, and they move into the space that you were occupying before, and there you go. Your shield bash just comes off a lot quicker because um, it doesn't have to go that extra range anymore. Um, this could be bad sometimes if you're going against, you know, uh, somebody who's charging a thrust or something like that. Or you miss aim it and they're charging a swipe and then you decapitate yourself. <laughs> but, uh, it's very, very useful. I can help out these guys real quick. Seems like, uh, we're winning pretty, pretty easily here. Last match was a massacre. This match doesn't seem to be going too well. You know? Ooh, especially when you get stabbed in the fucking liver or whatever the fuck like that. And I can hear the archers arching away. So I'll try to go and ruin their day. Knock him to the ground, stab him in the back. Bash me. What the fuck? Oh my god, someone just shot me in the fucking side. Okay, and I'm out of there. Come on, turn the fuck around, fight him. Whoa, did you see that arrow just flew straight fucking by me? Come on. So I'll try to use my two-handed spirit now. Two-handed spirit um, is only really usable when you're putting against people in like medium armor like this or cloth armor. Uh, if they're fucking wearing that, then you're free to go to town all you want. You can go hack and slash and whatever you want to do for as long, every long as it takes to kill them. Um, the problem comes in once when they, if they are one of those fast movers or one of those people who try to be very aggressive. Um, once that happens, watch this. He thinks he got away. He just thinks he fucking got away. Kill streak. Um, when you're fighting multiple enemies, you definitely want to try to stay away from using that. Uh, when you get aggressive people, like I was saying though, they just move in too quickly and it's hard to get a good attack with the spear and the shield because you have to be I mean, the hitbox is so precise you have to be a certain range away from them if you're not they just won't hurt them at all um, you see uh, it's just like the weapon is itself you, this blade is only on the tip there's no damage with this weapon if it hits um, on the shaft it's not no blunt damage. So you have to be very accurate when you swing it. Uh, you can do things like spin attacks to surprise your fucking enemy. Uh, thrusting is very important. Even when you're using two-handed spear, thrusting, I think it might even increase the range a little bit. I know it does when you're on the horse. Um, I think the range might be increased a slight bit here. If you're two-handed, if you're two-handed instead of the one, let me see. Yeah, it does. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you have a better range, but like I said, it's just more dangerous as they try to engage you close up. When that happens, highwaymen will definitely come in hand if you have your shield on your back. Um, if the shield's destroyed, you need to go ahead and switch out to your melee weapon. You're two-handed, and if that's destroyed, uh, well... <laughs> I don't know, you're fighting to the death at that point. You need to be on your own shit. Okay, so ooh, it looks like we only have 16 more kills left to win. This guy's gonna try to get away. See, the block, and as they, as they release their attack, that's when you should be releasing the shield button. That is when you can be... Oh, oh shit, I thought that was my, my guy. That is when you can start charging your attack, and I don't see how that fucking shit got through, but okay. Um, a lot of people think you have to, like, hold the block until they complete the attack and until it hits the shield. No. You can release right as they release their swing and it's about to engage your shield. I mean, you have to time it a little bit, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's very simple to do, and even in the middle of combat. 
because I guess it's that's where you should be using it. <laughs> um, I will say that Spear and Shield is much different using in a team deathmatch or a public game like this than it is using an adult server. Uh, you should probably start off if you haven't used this combination before. You should probably start off you uh, playing um, here in either team deathmatch, like I mentioned, or you know conquest. Uh, assault, even, even, I haven't seen one of those servers in a bit, but those are definitely ones that you want to be in because of the fact that you're going to have people who aren't really going to be focused on you, per se. So I'll be able to, you know, fight this guy right here, and if I fight him while he's fighting this guy, oh hey, you know, I just killed him. Um, with a beautiful stab, yes, but he just wasn't paying attention, so it was much easier for me to practice my aim get down the range of where my strikes are going to hit, like, that was perfect. He was nowhere near me, he couldn't attack me, even if he had swung that sword. Um, but I was at perfect range to hit him with my spear. So, if I was in a dual server, I'd be fighting people who have been fighting against um, spears for a while and know that blocking down will stop them. It'll be just much harder to develop your skills like that, at first, at least. Oh, last kill, oh! I, obviously, I didn't do anything with the end there. Um, but yeah, start off on this. And kick some ass. Learn how to play the game. Uh, I didn't do too great this time. 11 and 7. Um, don't be afraid to shield bash and use it in experimentation. Uh, left, right, you know, right before you turn. I mean, right before you release it, turn your direction. You gotta do that. It's important to evade attacks and just overall gameplay using that spear. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, it was fun recording this. Little, I guess, kind of tutorial of how to use a spear and a shield. Um, you may have ever used it before, and you may just think my techniques are ridiculous, but I hope you learned something, and I hope you can use it um, in your gameplay. Uh, I will, if you'd like to see more of it, or would like to see more techniques, um, some actual duels and talking through how to fight with those, I'll be more than happy to post those up for you guys. Just go ahead and leave a comment about it, and subscribe if you want to see those. Um, keep on gaming, this is Nichols1987.